Hello students, I am teacher Svetlana and in our today's lecture we will continue to learn about the human nervous system. We will learn about the autonomic nervous system ANS, the sensory organs that is eye and ear and the disorders of the nervous system which is covered in the chapter control and coordination. So let's begin. Autonomic nervous system that is the ANS. Autonomic nervous system transmits impulse from your central nervous system to the involuntary organs and the smooth muscles of your body. So they control our involuntary body movements. ANS consists of special sets of peripheral nerves that regulate the activities of the involuntary organs like the cardiac muscles, smooth muscles, glands etc. In this, impulses are conducted from the central nervous system by an axon that synapses with an autonomous ganglion. It is preganglionic neuron. The second neuron in this ganglionic pathway has an axon that extends from the autonomic ganglion to an effector organ and is known as postganglionic neuron. Have a look at this image here. This uh, shows uh, our control of the autonomic nervous system, shows the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Students, does the autonomic nervous system consist of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system? Let's have a look at it. Sympathetic nervous system, SNS, it is also called as thoracolumbar outflow. It originates in the thorax and the lumbar region of the spinal cord T1 to L3 and consists of 22 pairs of sympathetic ganglia which lie on a pair of sympathetic cords on lateral sides of the spinal cord. Have a look at this image. It highlights here the location of your uh, sympathetic division. The preganglionic nerve fibers are short and the postganglionic nerve fibers are long. Adrenaline and noradrenaline is produced at the terminal ends of postganglionic nerve fiber at the effector organ. Hence, they are also called as adrenergic fiber. Functions Sympathetic nervous system controls body activities during emergencies, that is, fight or flight responses. It has excitatory and stimulating effect on most organs of the body except in the digestive and the excretory organs. Parasympathetic nervous system, it is also called as craniosacral outflow. It consists of the branches from the cranial. The third, seventh, ninth, tenth nerves, sacral, second and third, and sp spinal, fourth nerves. It consists of ganglia which are very close or within the wall of the effector organs. The preganglionic nerves are long and postganglionic nerves are short. Have a look at this image here. It shows the parasympathetic division of your autonomous nervous system. Acetylcholine is produced at the terminal ends of postganglionic nerve at the effector organ. Hence, these are also called as cholinogenic fibers. Functions Parasympathetic nervous system is antagonistic to your sympathetic nervous system. It has opposite actions. It brings back to normal all activities which are stimulated by the parasympathetic system. Hence, it is also called as the housekeeping system. It has an inhibitory effect on most organs. However, the activities like those associated with digestion, peristalsis and micturation which are inhibited by the sympathetic system are thus accelerated by the parasympathetic system. Now let us have a look at our important sense organs. Now firstly we will talk about eye. The eye, our paired eyes are located in sockets of the skull with a cushion of fat around them. Parts of an eye, the adult human eyeball is nearly a spherical structure. Have a look at this image here. This is the, the anatomy of a human eye. The wall of the eyeball is composed of three layers, sclera, choroid and retina. External layer is composed of a dense connective tissue and is called as the sclera. Anterior portion of this layer is called as the cornea. Have a look at this image here. This is your cornea. Middle layer is your choroid. Here, have a look at this. 
middle layer this is your choroid which contains many blood vessels and looks bluish in color the choroid layer is thin over the posterior two thirds of the eyeball but it becomes thick in the anterior part to form the ciliary body the ciliary body itself continues forward to form a pigmented and opaque structure called as the iris have a look at this image here this is your iris which is the visible colored portion of the eye the eyeball contains a transparent crystalline lens which is held in place by ligaments attached to the ciliary body this here is the lens in front of the lens the aperture surrounded by the iris is called as the pupil have a look here this is your pupil the diameter of the pupil is regulated by the muscle fibers of the iris the inner layer is the retina and it contains three layers of cells from inside to outside that is the ganglion cells bipolar cells and the photoreceptive cells see students in the image this layer here is your retina Students, there are two types of photoreceptor cells which are called as rod cells and cone cells. Have a look at this image here. You can see a portion of the retina is highlighted for you and you can see the different cells that is the ganglion cells, the bipolar cells and here you have your photoreceptive cells which are the cones and the rods. Photoreceptor cells contain the light sensitive protein called the photopigments. The daylight vision and color vision are functions of cone and the twilight vision is the function of the rod. The rods contain a purplish red protein called the rhodospin or the visual purple which contains a derivative of vitamin A. In the human eye there are three types of cones which possess their own characteristic photopigments that respond to red, green and blue lights. The optic nerve leaves the eye and the retinal blood vessels enter it at a point median to and slightly above the posterior poles of the eyeball. Photoreceptor cells are not present the median region. So in the median region they are not present and hence it is called as the blind spot. At the posterior pole of the eye, laterally to the blind spot, there is a yellowish pigment spot called as macula lutini with a central pit called the foreway. It is thinner outer portion of the retina where only the cones are densely packed. The space between the cornea and the lens is called as the aqueous chamber and contains a thin watery fluid called the aqueous humor. The space between the lens and the retina is called the vitreous chamber and it is filled with a transparent gel called as vitreous humor. Students coming back to this image, uh, this is the region which is called as your blind spot. Now students let us have a look at the mechanism of vision or generation of the image. The light rays in visible wavelength focused on the retina through the cornea and lens generates potentials in the rods and the cones. The photosensitive compounds that is your photopigments in the human eye composed of opsin and retinal. Light induces dissociation of the retinal from opsin resulting in changes in the structure of the opsin which causes membrane permeability changes and that is why potential differences are generated in the photoreceptor cells which produces a signal that, gen that generates action potentials in the ganglion cells through the bipolar cells. The action potentials are transmitted to the optic nerve to the visual cortex area of the brain that is the cerebrum where the neural impulses are analyzed and the image formed on the retina is recognized. So here is a diagrammatic representation of how a normal eye focuses light. The light is received here you can see uh, and then it is concentrated a focus point on the retina where image is clear. And there's an optic nerve which sends the nerve impulses to the brain for interpretation. Moving to the next sensory organs, now we will see about the ear. The ears perform two sensory functions, hearing and maintenance of the body balance. 
parts of ear the ear can be divided into three major sections called the outer ear the middle ear and the inner ear the outer ear consists of pinna external auditory meatus which is the auditory canal have a look at this image here this is your auditory canal the external auditory meatus leads inwards and extends up to the tympanic membrane that is the eardrum this is your eardrum or the tympanic membrane the middle ear contains three ocelles called as malus anus and stipes yo in this image you can see they are labeled yo this ear is the parts of your inner ear the malus is attached to the tympanic membrane and the stipes is attached to the oval window of the coil yo this is the oval window and used in tube connects the middle ear cavity with the pharynx and the tube helps in equalizing the pressure on either sides of the eardrum the fluid filled inner ear called the labyrinth consists of two parts the bony and the membranous labyrinth here have a look here this is the bony labyrinth and the inner membranous labyrinth the bony labyrinth is a series of channels and inside these channels lies the membranous labyrinth which is surrounded by a fluid called as perilymph the membranous labyrinth is filled with a fluid called as endolymph the coiled portion of the labyrinth is called as cochlea this is your cochlea the membranes constituting cochlea the ren Isthmus and the basilar divides the surrounding perilymph-filled bony labyrinth into an upper sclera vestibule and the lower sclera tympani. The space within the coil, called the sclera media, is filled with endolymph. At the base of the cochlea, the sclera vestibule ends at the oval window, while the sclera tympani terminates at the round window which opens to the middle ear the organ of cauti is a structure located at the basal membrane which contains hair cells that act as auditory receptors further students the hair cells are present in rows on the internal side of the organ of cauti and have long stiff microvilli called as stereocilia about the rows of the hair cells is a thin elastic membrane called as tectorial membrane This organ acts as a transducer converting sound vibrations into nerve impulses. The inner ear also contains a complex system called as the vestibular apparatus located above the cochlea. The vestibular apparatus here have a look at this image here you can see this is the vestibular canal. The vestibular apparatus is composed of three semicircular canals called the olfactory organ consisting of the saculae and the utricel the base of the canals is solen and is called as ampulla which contains a projecting ridge called crista ampullaris also considered as the sensory spot called crista which has hair cells the saculae and the utricel contains a projecting ridge called as the macula students the macula and the crista are the receptors sensitive to the position of the head with respect to gravity the three semicircular canals are arranged such a way that the movement in any plane can be detected by these cells and the balance and the posture of the body is maintained receptors for dynamic balance lie in the crista of the ampullae while for static linear balance these are in the maculae of the utricellus and the saculus mechanism of hearing pinna of the ear receives the sound waves and directs them to the eardrum see it's receiving and directing eardrum vibrates and these vibrations are amplified and transmitted to the ear ocelles to the endolymph inside the cochlea this generates wave into the endolymph these waves induce ripples in to the basilar membrane these movements in the basilar membrane causes the hair cells to press against the tectorial membrane this generates nerve impulses in the afferent neurons impulses are sent to the brain via the auditory nerve auditory cortex of the brain decodes the sound thank you students for participating in this lecture so you soon again with the next topic till then take care be safe and keep learning